So let's listen closely to that original piano part and really see what it sounds like. Sounds good to me. So let's listen to it and see how far off the grid it really is. And we do that by listening to it with the click. Here we go. As you could hear, it is way off the grid, right? So let's adjust the click first of all so we can hear it at the right volume. I'm bringing up the uh, project settings metronome and I'm going to bring the volume of the click down a little bit. There we go. Now let's take a look graphically at just how far off the grid this region is. So we have to bring up the piano roll editor and let me just make it a little bit larger here. and. Uh, let me scroll. There we go. And we can see that at the beginning, we're kind of on the grid. Looks pretty good, but it's slowly getting off the grid as time moves on. I hate those guys who play with feeling. Right there. He's off. I mean, I'm off. And gee whiz, missed that downbeat completely. And that one's totally missed. So you can see, this is a mess. Well, it sounds good, but in terms of the way computers like to look at stuff, it's a mess. So let's beat map. We go to Global Tracks, click on the Disclosure Triangle, and notice there's no beat mapping tracks. So I hold down the Control key, click on the Configure Global Tracks, Take away the marker and signature, we don't need them, and add the beat mapping global track. Notice that I left the tempo track too. Here's the beat mapping track. The grid along the top of the beat mapping track matches the grid of the sequencer. In the beat mapping track header, there are parameters that are primarily for beat mapping audio, and we'll get into those later. Now, in beat mapping, you beat map regions, not tracks. So you have to select a region. And you'll see that the MIDI events, kind of like the same MIDI events that you'll find in the piano roll, appear now in the beat mapping track. And as a matter of fact, it's a good idea to bring up the piano roll so you can see exactly how the grid is going to adjust to the MIDI notes. In fact, you can bring up a beat mapping track right in the piano roll editor. You can bring up a beat mapping track in any of the graphic editors, including the hyper editor and the score editor. Now, if I had a little more screen space, this would be a lot easier, but let me make some final adjustments here, and then we'll begin the beat mapping process. So let's go back to the beginning of the song. There's a good place to start. <laughs> it's at the beginning. So I'll grab the proper grid line in the beat mapping track, and as I slide it around, you can see the different MIDI notes highlight. So I'm going to choose the MIDI note right there that is closest to the beginning of the song and beat map the grid to start at that point. It's very important to have the click on so you know exactly where you are. I can tell by listening that the next chord is supposed to be mapped to the upbeat of two. So let me figure out which one of these notes might be the best one to... Uh, about right there. Notice that the tempo changed to 91, and the MIDI notes in the piano roll are much closer to the upbeat of beat 2. Well, let's continue on the beat mapping. That sounds like the downbeat of beat 4. So I'll grab the line that represents the downbeat of beat 4 and adjust it to the MIDI notes that represent beat 4. And you can see in the piano roll that those notes are now aligned closer to the beat. And we have a tempo change 
between beats one and a half and beat four. We're now at 92.532. That's definitely the downbeat of, of measure two or bar two. So let me drag that and line something up there. That looks good. And notice now that we have another tempo change of 88.4. And that chord definitely falls on the downbeat of bar or measure three. So let's line that up. And every time we remap the grid, it writes a new tempo change in order to make those notes fall in the right part of the grid. So you listen to your song, you listen to where the notes should be, and you drag the grid to match the notes. That's definitely the upbeat. So find the upbeat tick and match them up and it writes in another tempo change. Well, that's definitely beat four, so I'll drag beat four's tick, match it up, and there we go. And this is obviously the downbeat of measure four. There we go. Hmm, an arpeggiated chord. What do you do? Well, you kind of find the note that you want to line up and you just line it up and you just keep going through and you line things up as best you can and all along the tempo track is writing in new tempo changes to match the performance and as you can see after a while after you get used to it it becomes kind of second nature now if you're not happy with one of your choices you can grab the line and move it to a different MIDI note, or delete it altogether by hitting the delete key. For instance, I just made a mistake, and you can tell by that sudden jump in tempo to 100. Usually when there's a sudden jump in tempo that doesn't make any sense, it's because you beat mapped something to the wrong beat. So I could either delete it, or I could just click on this beat mapped line with the eraser tool and then I'd have to go back and also erase that weird tempo change right the one right here let me find it and then play the tune again and listen and find the proper places to re-beat map it now, it's important to understand that if you go back to something in the beginning and re-beat map it, it's going to throw everything to the right of that out of whack. So make sure that everything is correct as you go along. Wow, this is a really big Ticello Rondo. And I know that this one comes in right on the downbeat. And you can see that the tempo track reflects the Ticello Rondo of the piano track. Pretty cool, right? And when I play it back, you'll hear that the grid and the click, of course, will follow the piano track. Making it easy for someone to play along and for me to quantize someone else's performance to my performance. And if you want, you could put in tempo curves, but those curves will affect the MIDI performance. which isn't exactly what we set out to do. Voila, we just beat mapped that MIDI region. And you can see all of the tempo changes that I actually performed when I played that region. So let's go down and look at our handiwork in the piano roll editor. And it's pretty clear to see that all of the MIDI notes that used to be off the beat are now either on the beat or really, really close. And that's the magic of beat mapping. We retained our original performance. We just changed the grid to match it. So I suggest that you try doing a little beat mapping now. Just create a simple region, not too many drastic tempo changes, and beat map it.